Okay, continuing our in-depth tool discussion. I guess that's enough about staples and staplers and how you put staples in. Let's talk about what happens when you have to get those staples back out and demonstrate how you do that. Oh, come on, I'm not going to pop any more balloons. Take them off. How does he do that? As I said before, there are times when you have to get your fasteners back out, your tacks or staples. It seems to happen with every canvas stretching job when you put a tack or a staple in the wrong place and then you have to take it back out. Or you may decide that you didn't get your canvas tight enough and you want to pull a few of the staples or tacks and stretch it a little tighter with the pliers. So there's various reasons why you have to take these back out at times. And it sometimes happens weeks, months, or years on, your painting will develop wrinkles just sitting on the wall. There are some reasons why that happens, and we'll discuss them later, but sometimes you can't explain it. It's just one of those mysteries of the universe. And then you have to take your painting down, remove some fasteners, and tighten until the wrinkles are gone. Anyway, when you go to pull your tacks or staples, you should put on gloves. I suggest a good stout pair of leather gloves. And the reason for that is a lot of times when you're digging out a, a staple or a tack, if you forget yourself and, and get your other hand too close, you could slip and poke yourself painfully. And here's another rule. Never dig staples out with your tool aimed back toward yourself because it's real embarrassing to go around with a screwdriver sticking out of your chest or even worse. Now it doesn't hurt your canvas to dig tacks and staples out of it. The holes are very tiny and harmless. Once you get the staple pried up, if it doesn't come all the way out, you can use your pliers. Get them up, and then if you need the pliers, just take it out like that. Tacks are a little harder to get under, but you can do it. Now remember, when you're doing this prying out of staples and tacks, if you happen to have a helper, make sure that helper is not in this area because it's so easy to slip. Keep your other hand out of the way, keep it clear, and let nobody get into this area when you're prying things like this. Use common sense and you won't be pinching or stabbing your fingers. All right, that concludes our discussion of tools for tacking and stapling and for untacking and unstapling. Now let's talk about the one tool that you can't do without when you're stretching canvas, and that is canvas stretching pliers. Now these pliers have wide jaws to grip the cloth, and they also have this tab or tooth down here. The reason for that tab is so that when you stretch the cloth, you can put that tab against the wood like that, grip the cloth, and it gives you something to pry against and stretch the cloth like that. Now you can buy these at any store that sells art supplies or you could order them through an art supply catalog. There are different kinds of canvas stretching pliers and you should know the difference and you may want to pick between them. Here's what I've already showed you, the cheapest type, the ordinary canvas stretching pliers. Here is a much better version, also much more expensive of course, these pliers have a compound action. You can see the extra joint here. And the result of that is that you don't have to squeeze nearly as hard to get a much tighter grip on the cloth. And it's a lot easier on your hand. Now when I originally showed you these canvas stretching pliers, I'm sure all the mechanics and welders in the audience said, hey, those are flanging pliers, sheet metal pliers. Well, actually they're not, but if you do take ordinary sheet metal pliers and weld the tab onto them, you instantly get canvas stretching pliers. These have the compound action, just like the fancy pliers that you buy for canvas stretching. Now here's another pair of these that I've welded the tab on the front instead of the bottom, and I'll show you why in a minute. Another feature of this type of pliers is that they will lock on to what they grip like that. So if you're using them as canvas stretching pliers, they will actually get a grip on the cloth and lock. 
You may or may not like that feature as a beginner if you, or if you have a small, weak hand. You may love this because now you can stretch the canvas with no further need to squeeze. Personally, I don't like it because it slows me down. You have to unlock it after each bite. Now some of these sheet metal pliers, when you buy them, have sharp edges and they would cut canvas. So if you get some that do, you might want to dress the edges with a file, smooth them out a little bit so they won't cut the cloth. So why would you want to make your own canvas stretching pliers? Well, these compound pliers cost over $100. Whereas the homemade ones cost, say, $20 for the sheet metal pliers and maybe a few dollars to weld on the tab. And you're still well ahead of the game financially. Plus, if you do like this locking feature, that's something that you can't get on any store-bought canvas stretching pliers. Now, with the tab welded on the front like this, that makes this into a pair of gallery wrap style canvas pliers. What does that mean? Well, while ordinary canvas pliers grab the canvas like this and stretch it so that you put your tacks into the side of the frame here, the so-called gallery wrap style grabs the cloth and pries against the inner side of the frame like this in order to pull the cloth tightly around the back and you put your tacks in here. The idea is that you're leaving the outer edge smooth and clear so that you can paint right around the corner. Supposedly, if you do that, you don't need a frame. So in this gallery wrap style, you're supposed to paint, if this was stretched on here, you would paint right around the corner. And I've done that a few times. I've got one here. This is a painting in the gallery wrap style you paint right around the corner. And the idea is when you hang it on the wall, it doesn't need a frame. But I don't normally paint around the corner of canvases. I like to frame canvases. What I do paint around the edges and sides of are these panels, like this one. You see, I go right around the side of this textured panel. But this is not a canvas. This is a wooden panel. And this tutorial is not about how to make these wooden panels. Everybody wants to make canvases, but I don't know how many people are interested in doing these. If you are interested in building wooden panels, go to my website and put in a request and maybe we'll do a tutorial on how to do that. But this is braced plywood. Oh, hey, 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 hey.